But anyway, let's let's deal with this part of the message. This would be a, a preview or a, a prologue to the Hoshana to the Hoshana uh, Araba. And the Hoshana Araba is the seventh day. It's the seventh day of um, in the fulfillment, the culmination the culmination of this particular holy season for us as uh, Ethiopian Hebrews, um, black Jews, true Hebrew Israelites, the Lex Rastafari, and, and many others. They may, you know, we may have different um, names or different groups or different camps that we basically belong to, but basically this is the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as Beta Israel as beta Israelites, and we might be in different camps, you know, but the word does say that in my father's house there are many mansions, and it's about time that we recognize that as a people we're not a monolith, and I just make this statement to kind of remind one that there's a lot of people who are vibes in this message, and the message of good news of his majesty, and, and we all might not be of the same particular um, mansion in our Father's house. And our Father is the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you recognize that truth, both, and see that truth has, in a sense, two parts. One is the, the flesh, that he came in the flesh. He's a black man. That's why I says those who don't recognize they came in the flesh, you know, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. And now the Antichrist is this counterfeit gospel is counterfeit Jesus, this whitewashed Jesus that has gone out there. Now, how do we know it? Are we judging because it's white? No. We're judging it because it's not right. And it's not right based on the fruit. So when we judge um, white supremacist Christianity by its fruit, that's when we recognize the evil of it. And then as we study it, then we begin to recognize, oh, this is a man-made image they made up way after the fact, after they whitewashed the real black images. So Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach really is black. Now, there's many different groups. How can we say there's many different, instead of using groups, let's use what the Bible calls it, many different mansions. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So when we are putting out a message, when we're doing these messages, we have to remember who we're speaking to. Not like these ignorant pastors and preachers that will be preaching up there saying, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you wasn't sent. Were you sent? Find out who you were sent to. So who were we sent to? We were sent to the lost sheep, the once lost but now found to Israel. That, that's the people who we were sent to, the so-called enslaved, so-called Africans or Ethiopian Hebrews in the North Country, in the Caribbean, in the Americas, the North Country, the Americas, and the Caribbean, the Americas, North and South and even some up in Canada, who can trace themselves back to this same biblical fulfillment of Deuteronomy chapter 15, um, chapter, excuse me, chapter 20, uh, 28, verse 15, to verse 68, and special instances on verse 68. That explains the slave trade. In other words, anytime you hear they talk about the slave trade and slavery, and they don't mention Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, they're only giving you at best half the story, and at best what's not fully blessed, what's not going to what's not going to help us. And that's one reason why 40 years later, after the whole civil rights movement, and after we wandered in this wilderness of North America for nearly um, 40 years, or some say beyond 40 years. It all depends on how they're calculating it, but we're in that 40-year period right now. This is the reason why we're seeing what we're seeing and witnessing what we're witnessing. You know, because a lot of folks really believe the lie, you know, that they could legislate, that you could say, their freedom and, and, and through, through this, this, this spiritual Egypt. This is like spiritual Egypt. Basically, I'm not going to go too much in that, right now, but in beginning this part off with a lesson on the Hoshana Araba, the Hoshana Araba. Now, the reason why, and I give thanks to Iconic uh, Music and to the other subscribers and ones who have left 
positive and productive comments. Even those who may have left comments are not positive. As long as one is truly being truthful, you understand, then that is truly helpful. But Iconic Music spoke about, I think, about two days, two, three days ago, that we're in um, the portion that the, the, the Torah portion is Tubal Cain. Now, when we saw that, we said the Torah portion is Tubal Cain. That, that's occurring in, in the Genesis portion, beginning off. That's Bermajamaria Barashit or Barasit in, in what's known as the beginning. In the beginning, we start with the first of the Torah portion readings. But then we said, oh, that, that even happened to us in working and walking this out. That what one is looking at is this document right here. And, and also the, the YouTube, the Ethiopian World Net site, this particular document here, which is called Yesen Batawi Senbet. Yesamen Tawi, you could have said Yesamen Tawi Senbet or Rita Neba, or what we call on the website the Sabbath house readings that contains the Torah or the Orit, the Ethiopic Torah portions. And we have 54 weeks in a year, and some of that is some basic information that if you don't know, then we have some works, and you can check out even on the, on the Internet, the Wikipedia page. That gives you an overview, a overview, but... The, the specifics is the half of the story they're not telling you is what we, through the Holy Spirit and through the will of our God and Father and the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, this is what we're giving you here, the other half of the story or the parts, especially as it relates to us as the Falashas of the West. That's a collective name. Because Falasha means exile. Don't confuse it with the Falashas of the East because they are Falashas of the East, but we are the Falashas of the West. And for the Ukamites or into the Kemetian, this links with the Amenta of the West. When we get into that part of the wisdom of the Egypts and the wisdom of the Egyptians, Acts of the Apostles 722, that's our uh, lawgiver and our uh, Coptic Hebrew brother Moshe or Moses. He is the author of those five books that in our Torah portions that we study as well as the prophets and the Buddhist Hadasha or the Adis Kidan, the New Testament, New Covenant. But this particular video is to emphasize the culmination of Sukkot, as well as to give a point and a lesson of how we need to understand what our order and the order of the readings are, because we're in a holy time now. And when we're in the holy time, that means that the regular the regular Torah portions, in a sense, are suspended. For example, we're in Sukkot now, we're in the fall festival season. Many of the videos that we saw and have put up and posted and some other parts and portions and a couple of teachings also, like this particular teaching here on Hoshana Araba, start to explain the, the holy days. And this is why we're going through the due diligence to show, okay, Leviticus chapter 23, we have the three times, and in those three times, there are seven particular, for lack of a better word, holy days. Now, if you look in this very same Sabbath portion reading, Brother Iconic Music, who said that it's made a connection between um, the reading, the, the Torah portion reading, and they're in one, they're actually at, at one, but we haven't finished 54 yet. So please make a note of that, that we haven't finished 54 yet. So you're a little bit ahead. And, and when we saw that comment, we said, wow, we didn't get to teach on this. Now, it may seem to some to be complicated or complex. And if that's so, well, you may not have really accepted the new birth. You're not really born again. You still are maybe... Um, a little bit curious, maybe you are still approaching it like you, you haven't received it. Maybe you're still studying whether you want to receive this and you haven't taken that discipleship where he says, take my cross, you understand, and take your cross upon you and learn of me, you know, take your yoke. This is why we touched on the yoke, the discipleship, because we're not about to move into a new cycle of Torah portion reading. So some of you all may have gone through portion this year, the whole year, and we're trying to do our due diligence as well 
to um, present, you know, the extra teachings in order to understand, for example, this is a holy, a holy season. This is the fall festival season. There's three main seasons. And if you go back to some of the, the previous videos in the last week to two weeks, we've touched on like the three holy seasons, you know, and this is the third, which is often called ingathering or tabernacles. And tabernacles in the Hebrew is Sukkot. And Sukkot, for us in Rastafari Revelation, it really prepares us both for the exodus out of Babylon as well as coming into the promised land, our dwelling, because it's about in-gathering, in-dwelling. But the prerequisite is the true and living faith of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And this is why the Bible teaches us to study and show ourselves approved. And although that's the words of our Coptic Hebrew brother, Gnostic brother, Hawadi Apollos, or the Apostle Paul, Christ himself would say to some of them that you do err, not knowing the scriptures or the power of God. So his, his majesty's son, Jesus Christus, also advocates education. Education is the key. You understand? The true way of Christ and the true Christ consciousness is not about ignorance. And the first knowledge and learning school is the word. And what better way to disciple ourselves is to actually go through these Torah portion readings and to really understand the other half of the story that some of the wild olives who were grafted in on the so-called um, Jews, they've, they've grasped this portion. And that can be explained biblically and scripturally as well, like who the Jews are and, and some of the things that we in Afrocentricity and black consciousness have believed to the extreme are not true, and this is also stopping our overcoming because, remember, it's more about the father and his son and his child, and it's more about us and our God or, or, the, or the, the bride, groom, and the bride, you know, we as the church, in other words. So we're about to move into on tomorrow, actually, which will be the seventh day in this tabernacle and in-gathering season, the 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 festival day or the holy day, should we say, um, the Hoshana Araba. Now, iconic music and maybe a couple of others might be at the first, um, the first uh, Torah portion reading on page four. Actually, I would like you, if you downloaded this, to go to page, um, go to page eight. And now on page eight, where it says additional parashiot for the holy days or the holidays, you will find that it begins off with Rosh Hashanah, and then it goes to the Shabbat uh, Shuva, then Yom Kippur, and then you see Sukkot, 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 right? And then we get to this Sukkot, then we get to Hoshana Araba. Hoshana Araba is actually where we're at in our readings. So you might have gone a little bit ahead, but that's still good. And we haven't really checked out in detail what you said prophetically, but because when we saw that you was already in um, the first portion, reading for the Sabbath, the the Rashid or the Metamaria, in the beginning portion, we said that we have to do this sort of a video or update because there's probably others that might not understand how to really navigate the the weekly Sabbath portion, the regular weekly Sabbath portions with the additional um, Sabbath portions or the parashiot for the holidays. And therefore, this is why we're doing this particular um, presentation right here. And then we hope, y'all willing, to get more into the details of the Hoshana Araba, which is actually tomorrow or October um, 19th, which according to our Hebraic calendar would be the 21st day of Tishrei the 21st day of the, of the seventh month of, of Tishrei. And so it's the seventh month, you understand? And this is the seventh uh, day of this particular holy day known as ingathering, also known as tabernacles, also known as Sukkot. You understand? Sukkot from the singular, which means booths or tabernacles, but it begins with Sukkah. And the sukkah is a tabernacle or a hut or a tukul, 
Alay Gojo. You understand? These are some indigenous Ethiopian and and, and African um, words that describe the same sort of structure. You understand? And this is a prerequisite for repatriation. And now, as I begin to study it, I recognize why we have not been able, as a group or as a people, to come out, since there's no chains on our hands and feet, because we still are not fully versed with the way, the truth, and the life. There is a way that the Almighty has provided for us. But in order to grasp this and to receive this, we have to study. And this is why, through this multimedia technology we have, YouTube and Google, we're seeking to utilize these media to get out the message, because it's all about message, message, message. But once we got the message, and once we are agreed, this brings our unity, you understand, spiritually and even naturally and organically. This brings our unity. But we must note that there's, there's, there's um, many mansions in our Father's house. So we reach out to the black Jews who call themselves black Jews, to the black Hebrew Israelites, even many of them. You understand, seeing that there's a foundation that many of them don't recognize that connects with Ethiopia and his imperial majesty. They might have been taught certain things concerning the king of kings, Simon Selassie, or concerning the Ethiopians that were not right and exact. So we challenge you to present the evidence, and then if you're willing to learn, then we're willing to reason, then we're willing to fellowship, if you show yourselves as truly as, as brothers. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll teach even the heathen. You understand? But you could be in teachers of righteousness, but we're not going to fellowship with those who are not brothers or sisters and mothers because that actually goes against, that goes against the spirit, that goes against his order. So it's not I and I that say it. It's our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that say it. So we, we need to show ourselves obedient. But we're, we're in this because us and our ancestors before us were disobedient. And some prefer disobedience to obedience. Let that be their choice. But those of us to, who choose to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil show the greatest wisdom, show the greatest hakma. And the on, only overcomers, according to Revelation, are those who have wisdom and those who overcome. So in order to overcome this, we need knowledge. Because my people are destroyed, they're lost, they perish because of a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6, you know, refers to that and we've been rejected as his priesthood. So when we were rejected as his priesthood, others came in, namely converts, Khazars, Jebusites, Edomites, called the German and Polish Jews and others. Our issue should not be with them, my brothers and sisters. You understand? I mean, really, truly and seriously speaking, yes, who are the Jews who call themselves Jews but the synagogue of Satan? The Ring of Power kind of shows you that. That five-hour-long documentary basically goes into that. We have it available at our website, and it's on the Internet. If you want to just watch it, check it out for free. If you want to, if you want a copy, you, you can get it from our uh, video um, archives library and video store on, online at www.lojsociety.org. So now, with that being said, I want to try to teach on how to really understand how the holidays or the holy days coordinate with the regular reading days. Because if you don't understand that when a holy day comes around, and the holy days for the Hebrews are luni solar, or lunar solar, and as we mentioned before, it's the heavens that is the clockwork or, or the clock of the Almighty. He says this from the very beginning. And these are for signs and for seasons and for days and for years because we're talking about what goes on in the heavens. Don't get it twisted. Make no mistake about it. We're not worshiping as the heathen and the sheathen worship these heavenly signs. And, and it, you don't worship your clock. You don't worship the hands and your clock or the number one, two, three. Some might do that, but that's not what we're doing. It's to tell time and to redeem the time because the days are kufu. The days are evil. So, let us put together this, this, this additional parashio, additional portions for the holy days. And as you will see, it begins with Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah would be the equivalent in the Ethiopic sense of the Adi Samet, of the new year. But since our establishment is a Hebrew or Hebraic establishment and the true establishment of, of what we call the Solomonic and the Davidic dynasty, even of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, is Hebraic. 
there's a couple of documents that we have available and we have um, endeavored and we're publishing these documents. One is our, what I call our Ethiopic Talmud, um, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minyamik or the Kibbutz Nagesh. This is our Ethiopic Talmud. And, we're, and this year coming, y'all willing, this year coming forward, we're going to begin to include more of this as reference to our black Hebrew or black Jewish way of life in the Lex Rastafari. So I often say these different um, nomenclatures for the different portions of the people. Some of the people prefer to call themselves black Jews, and they see themselves as black Jews. Others prefer to call themselves Hebrew Israelites, they see themselves as Hebrew Israelites. Others prefer to call themselves Ethiopian Hebrews, they see themselves as Ethiopian Hebrews. Others prefer, prefer to call themselves elect Rastafari or Rastafari, they see themselves as Rastafari. So there's, and some are just Christians, black Christians, who recognize this truth and maybe of whatever perhaps denomination or whatever nomenclature or calling that they are. Remember what the Bible says, uh, one should remain in the calling that they are called in, you understand, as well as each one in the resurrection is according to his order, and the first fruits are of Christ, and the first fruits of this prophetic time is Rastafari, the true Rastafari. You understand, that's the first, that's the new name, that's the fulfillment of the new name. But true Rastafari must recognize our Ethiopian and Hebraic foundation. You, you see, so study of our Talmud, of this is the teaching of His Majesty, name of the Kibbutz and the Guest, demonstrates to us, even from the title page, being the history of the departure of God and His Ark of the Covenant from Jerusalem or Old Jerusalem to Ethiopia to New Jerusalem, and the establishment of the religion of the Hebrews and the Solomonic line or the lineage of kings, the Davidic, the Davidic lineage, or the house of David in that country. This is what the Kibbutz Neges is about. Now, we know that there's some Hebrews, black Hebrews out there who probably reject this, but none of their arguments make any sense if you really are studying and showing yourself approved. You understand? It might seem so. You understand? On the surface, but once you get into the detail, this, this, is, this is part of our... Um, lost, once lost but now found heritage as a people. So if you want to get a copy of this, you can go to our website and we have this available there. But there's also other copies if you want to just check it out for free on the internet. But for those who are serious about it for themselves and their household, it will be good to get a copy of this and you can go to our website and the books, the books, um, the books page. So now coming forward, we're going to do a little more on this particular holy day that's coming forward, and that's the Hoshana Araba, and also seek to make that connection with, um, with the New Testament, because you probably all recall when Christ came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Some call that Palm Sunday. Well, that's really the Hoshana Araba. That's the Hoshana Araba. So we're going to touch on it a little bit more. Stay tuned. Y'all willing more to come.